In this video, I want to talk about when and where we would use a bypass check valve on some flow or pressure device. This seems to be an area of confusion for a lot of people, and it's understandable why. But really, when and where we use a bypass check valve in a hydraulic system is based upon where the devices are going to be placed 90% of the time. 10% of the time, it's about the internal workings of the device itself. Here I have a very basic fluid power hydraulic 4-3 uh, directional control valve controlling the cylinder. Everything that I'm going to talk about here would remain perfectly true for pneumatics as well. So if I'm going to put a device before my directional control valve, so that's between my power source and my directional control valve, I do not require a bypass check valve. Okay? If I put it after my directional control valve, I do require a bypass check valve on about 90% of the control valves that I'm going to put in here, so the pressure or flow. And the reason is very simple, but it's very complicated for new students. The reason it's true is because before the directional control valve schematically, okay, oil only goes in one direction. So on my pressure line, this is my pressure port, this is my tank, oil only flows in this direction. Going back to tank, it only goes back this direction. All right? So if I were to, let's say I, for some reason, I wanted to control the flow going to everything in the system right after, between, the, uh, between the power supply and the directional control valve, all I would require is a needle valve here because oil only goes in this way. If I were to put a, uh, a meter valve or a flow control that has a flow control or a needle valve with a bypass check valve, that would be, it would be no point because oil never flows back this way, okay? This is something that you see with single acting cylinders sometimes that are using like a three, a four, a three two directional control valve. People will sometimes meter those out by placing a needle valve on the, between the tank, out from the tank port down to the tank. And that can save money sometimes, more convenient for installations. There's a number of reasons for that. But when do we need a bypass check valve after this? Well, I have, I have a, a number of videos about how we actually meter in the flow, which I'll link uh, at the end of this video. But you'll notice here that we need a bypass check valve for flow control because we want to control the flow in only one direction. So oil will come up here, it will be restricted, but it will come back fast because it can go through the bypass check valve. And people often stop at that point and think they understand a bypass check valve. But bypass check valves aren't just used for flow control valves. They can be used for any pressure control valve that may need to be placed above the directional control valve. Here's an example of a pressure reducing valve. Okay? The pressure reducing valve here is going to reduce pressure on both extension and retraction. And so we would want to put this before the directional control valve because it will, it will control the pressure for all of the fluid going into this system. And this works great. Notice I don't need a bypass check valve because again, oil's not coming down this way. Now, let's say I have a pressure reducing valve that I want to be able to reduce the pressure in just one direction, okay? This is great. I don't need a bypass check valve here because this is normally open. So on most valves, you, when you're using a, a normally open one, which is basically your pressure reducing valve in hydraulics, when it comes back, it has a path to come through here. So it does not require a bypass check valve, unlike the flow control valve that we talked about before. So here's an example of where I would want to use a bypass check valve, and let's talk about why. So if I, if I activate my solenoid and oil comes up through here, it can't get through until it receives a signal. So this is a remote sequence valve, so it's receiving a signal somewhere else in the system before the cylinder can extend. So, if it, so it's in this position, it receives pressure, this shifts over, this is now allowed to go back. More than likely in the system, we would lose pressure here and this would shift back over to here. All right? 
Now, when my directional control valve is activated by this solenoid, oil comes up, there's no path for this to get rid of, for the oil to go by, nor would we want this to be sequenced. That's where we would need a bypass check valve. Okay? Sometimes these can be built in, most of the time they're built in, other times they can actually be added in and put in parallel with this. So now let's go through the flow. This solenoid activates, it comes up through here, it splits, it cannot get through the bypass check valve. It has to wait for me to get pressure here, this shifts over, the cylinder will extend. The system continues, pressure drops over here, this shifts back to its normally closed position. This, the solenoid over here activates, pressure comes up through here. This oil needs a path to exhaust back the tank. So as this goes, it goes through the bypass check valve, down to here, back down to tank. Okay, so in this case, we need that bypass check valve. But let's say for some reason the system was designed differently. If the sequence valve is down here, now here, let's say I want to make sure that something on this machine has already happened before this entire device can sequence. This is much different, okay? Okay, so now, let's say this gets sequenced over, this moves, pressure is supplied here. But, Oil will never go this way, so I don't require a bypass check valve on here. Now, can you put, can you, if this is the only one you have, can you put one on here with a bypass check valve? Sure, but it would be a waste. If you're ordering it, a bypass check valve is only required, or needed in most cases, above or after the directional control valve, between the directional control valve and the actuator, okay? But between the power supply and the uh, directional control valve, most often times a bypass check valve is not required. Okay? I hope this helps you with a little bit of an understanding of where and why we use a bypass check valve. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section. And uh, as always, if you enjoyed the video, please hit like and subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching.